Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can talk about the signs of a wife with borderline personality traits. So in prior videos, I've talked about both husbands and wives with narcissistic traits, psychopathic traits, sadistic traits. This is the video about borderline personality traits and again, specifically wives. So I'll answer this question by looking at the 10 signs of a wife with borderline personality traits. Now this video is focused on the husband and wife relationship. In theory, a relationship that is relatively stable, not a new or dissolving relationship. One where there's an expectation that the couple is in a long-term relationship. These signs, of course, could apply to a long-term relationship in general, whether or not the couple was married. Here I'll be talking about borderline personality traits and borderline personality disorder. Now someone can have borderline personality traits without necessarily having the disorder. So BPD is an official personality disorder, an official mental disorder listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Borderline traits are really just personality traits that researchers study. Now of course both have an application. If somebody has BPD, of course that would indicate that they might need treatment, right? It might be a good idea to get treatment and it might guide what type of treatment was used. Borderline traits are used in other areas. For example, somebody could have another mental disorder and borderline traits, and because they have those borderline traits, that changes the treatment protocol a little bit. So again, both have an application in mental health treatment. In the research, BPD has studied more than just borderline traits in general, so that's going to be evident in the signs, right? They're going to have more information from research involving borderline personality disorder as opposed to borderline personality traits in general. As I review the 10 signs, when I say the word wife, I'm really talking about a wife with borderline personality traits. It's a lot easier just to say wife than that whole phrase, right? So that's what I'm going to do here for this video. These signs are observable from the husband's point of view or people who know the couple, at least in theory. Having one or more of these signs doesn't necessarily mean the wife has BPD or the traits. Rather, these signs are just simply associated with borderline personality traits. So now taking a look at sign number one. In this marriage where the wife has BPD, we see the distress starts early, right? So a lot of people, when they get married, they have six months, a year, sometimes a little bit more, where things are pretty good before the relationship kind of settles down a bit. That doesn't mean that all relationships turn bad. It's just for almost everybody, the first few months or the first year is pretty good. With this type of marriage, that's not really the case very often. The distress, again, begins right away. In the first few years, the stress is particularly high in these types of marriage because I think the stress is somewhat new for the couple. The stress doesn't necessarily decrease over time either. In some ways, it actually increases, but people become better at coping with it. So there's this idea that things improve a little bit, at least for most of the cases. Sign number two involves the personality traits in this type of marriage. Again, one where the wife has BPD. We see that in these situations, both people tend to have borderline personality traits. So this is really just more evidence that points toward a sort of mating. So individuals with borderline traits tend to be attracted to one another. But we also see a lot of other information here around personality traits. Now looking at one particular study, and I'll put the references for all the studies I used in the description for this video, but looking at one particular study, we see that 45% of the husbands in these situations have at least one personality disorder. Now the expected would be 10 to 15%. So if you just found any couple at random that involved a husband and wife, and you assess the husband, Again, 10 to 15% of the time, you would see there was a personality disorder. So 45% is a lot different, right? That's a lot more, and that probably didn't happen by accident. That observation wasn't due to random error alone. So what personality disorders do we see in the husband more often? Paranoid, antisocial, and obsessive-compulsive personality disorders, all coming in at about 15% prevalence, and avoidant personality disorder coming in at 11%. So again, all these percentages much higher than we would expect to observe in the general population for 
a personality disorder in general, as I mentioned, but also for these specific personality disorders. Now, one of the criteria for antisocial personality disorder indicates that an individual has to have symptoms of conduct disorder that were evident before the age of 15. So, again, this is just one element for somebody to be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. Interestingly, over 50% of the husbands in this type of marriage meet this particular criterion. Moving to sign number three, this has to do with the types of attachment styles we'd expect to see. These are really attachment style irregularities. Now, the attachment styles we see in this article, and again, for this sign, I'm using the same article I used before, we see four different attachment styles, secure, dismissive, preoccupied, and fearful. Generally speaking, secure is considered normal or normative, right? That's what we would expect to see in most marriages. So when we look at the wife in the situation, we see in terms of secure attachment style, in this one study, 0%, none. None of the wives had a secure attachment style. So if we look to the wider population of wives with borderline personality disorder, we would expect, of course, some to have a secure attachment style, but not many. Just looking at the definition of borderline personality disorder, it shouldn't be surprising that it would be a very small number. You'd be unlikely to find somebody who had a secure attachment style and BPD. Now, in terms of the dismissive attachment style, few in the study, 3% but we saw a lot in terms of preoccupied and fearful, 60% and 37% respectively, which again shouldn't be surprising based on how we define BPD. In terms of the husbands in these marriages, they were roughly balanced between secure, preoccupied, and fearful in terms of prevalence, and only 5% had the dismissive attachment style. Now, if you compare this type of marriage to a marriage where neither spouse has BPD, we can really get a juxtaposition that tells us something about how different these BPD-related marriages are. We see in the control groups, the normal marriages, for a lack of a better term, in terms of the wives, 70% were secure, 23% preoccupied, and few were fearful or dismissive in terms of their attachment style. The husbands were somewhat similar in terms of these percentages. So again, we see a significant difference between a marriage that involves a wife with BPD and a marriage that does not. Moving now to sign number four. Sign number four is we see terrible problem solving and communication skills, as well as frequent arguing. The wife often demonstrates a criticism, attack, conflict type behavior and avoidance behaviors. So we often see the same arguments and complaints year after year. Now, when talking about marriages without BPD, we still see arguing in those marriages. Usually, the format of the arguing is the wife making demands and the man withdrawing. Right? That's the typical format we see in the research literature, explained for what they call community samples. However, with a marriage that involves the wife having BPD, that's reversed. We see the men making demands and the women withdrawing. So a real difference there in terms of the approach avoidance style. Now, in terms of the arguments specifically, again, now talking about the borderline personality disorder affected marriage, we see that there is physical violence in both directions, but the wife exhibits more. She tends to be the aggressor. The wife also exhibits more verbal aggression. And during arguments, if the wife cannot hurt the husband in some way, or sometimes even if she can, she'll often hurt herself. That's fairly common. So, both people are physically hurt, even though most of the time, again, the wife would be the aggressor. We also see a lot of usage of weapons of opportunity. So this is really based on reactive anger, not instrumental anger. This is emotional and unplanned, not like a scheme to harm somebody. So again, weapons of opportunity. And I've seen many examples of this throughout my career. Chairs, eating utensils. I mentioned in a prior video the use of a spork, which I thought was a little unusual. Shoes, dishes, glasses, like glasses that would hold water. Gallon containers, like a gallon of milk, which weighs over eight pounds and can do a lot of damage. Keys, a lot of times these are thrown, like the keys are thrown. Phones, like smartphones, books, clocks, framed photos. 
I've seen examples of a lot of objects being swung or thrown or just in general being used as a weapon. As part of these arguments and sometimes as part of the devaluation cycle, we also see that the wife will destroy something that the husband values, like something that has sentimental value for him perhaps. I've seen a lot of horrible examples of this as well. I've seen situations where the wife took tools or like computers and put them in hydrochloric acid. I've seen situations where the wife sold or threw away collections like stamp collections, coin collections. I've seen the wife throw away medicine, right? So medicine the husband would need, it would be important to have. And I've also seen the situation where the wife will fill the husband's vehicle, like his car, with gasoline. Now sometimes when I talk about this, like in trainings, whatever, people will say, oh, that's really nice, you know, the wife filled the husband's car with gasoline. I'm not talking about the tank. I'm not talking about the fuel tank. I'm talking about the passenger compartment. So filling the passenger compartment with gasoline and sometimes lighting on fire. But interestingly, most of the time, it doesn't reach that point. Right? This isn't a high frequency behavior in the first place, but in the times where I've seen it, like in my clinical experience, it usually doesn't involve igniting the gasoline. Although I do think that's the point, right, to at least pretend that the car is going to get set ablaze. Now moving to sign number five, this one is dissatisfaction. So on the part of the wife, this is common. About 50% of wives with BPD are dissatisfied in their marriages. With the husband, it's not as common. It's at 40%, so still quite high, but not quite as common as we see with the wives. Interestingly, this isn't shockingly different than marriage that doesn't involve BPD, right? So it's worse, but not shockingly different. Under this sign, dissatisfaction, we also see frequent breakups. Again, not surprising given the nature of BPD. And what we see from the research literature is that we could expect a breakup and possibly a reunion about once every six months, right? On average. That doesn't mean it's going to happen like clockwork. That's just the average. Sign number six is that others see the couple as having the most intense, love hard, fight hard type relationship. And a lot of the time I see this mentioned as a compliment. So somebody would be talking about the husband and wife where the wife has BPD and they'll say they must really love each other. They're so intense and their arguments are so heated. But I don't think this should usually be thought of as a compliment, right? There's a lot of destruction that happens with this fighting and arguing behavior. Friends will watch in horror as the couple argues. Eventually they'll find reasons not to visit, right? No one wants to be the referee. Nobody wants to get in the middle of the people who are arguing. So the couple becomes more isolated. If an individual does want to take on the role of being referee, like taking sides with the wife or with the husband, this often backfires because with these types of relationships, again, we see breakups, but then a reconciliation. And when the couple reconciles, they often drop the friends who sided with one or the other. This is fairly common with infidelity as well. Moving to sign number seven, this sign is the wife believes that sex resets everything in the relationship, right? It resets everything emotionally. It means that the couple is on the right track. And essentially, the wife believes that sex equals forgiveness, right? If sex occurs, then there's forgiveness in the relationship. Now, the wife may be confused if the husband expects more than that, right? So it's almost like kind of a superficial level of operating. So if the husband wants a real connection, like constructive mutual communication, as we call it in mental health counseling, this might be seen as kind of foreign to the wife. Now, of course, this type of communication is one of the keys to a successful marriage. So again, we can see how these marriages can be in trouble from a few different angles. Sign number eight is that the wife is extremely jealous. And this is isolating for the husband as well. The husband can have no female friends really of any type, regardless of any age difference or any position difference like at work or anything. He's really just not allowed to have friends. We see continual accusations. We also see monitoring electronic devices like a smartphone, for example. Sign number nine is that the couple is searching for different things in life. So a different sense of purpose or a different meaning 
in the relationship. The wife is always searching for something more, something more intense, more satisfying, something ideal, which kind of crosses over into narcissism a little bit. She's searching for her true love, something permanent, looking for satisfaction and security that she's never felt. So really looking for something that she's never had. Now, part of this, of course, can lead to infidelity. The wife over-identifies as a couple, so she kind of loses her own identity in this marriage. There's no individual identity. So essentially, the wife looks at her own search for meaning and purpose as the couple's search for meaning and purpose. There's overlap there. The boundaries aren't clear there. Now, the husband is searching for stability, peace, and an end to all the anger and arguing. However, we see that he blames himself often, especially for the wife's more severe behavior, like self-harm behavior. So he develops a habit of giving in, and he feels powerless and exhausted. Moving to sign number 10, this sign is contemplating a divorce or getting a divorce. Now, interestingly, the research literature does not all point in one direction on this topic, right? One study we see found that borderline personality traits have no association with divorce 10 years into the relationship. Now, what's happening beyond 10 years is a different story, and maybe more divorces occur after that. But that's a pretty surprising finding, although there are many other articles that indicate that if the wife has BPD, the chances of divorce are quite a bit higher. So again, we see mixed results. Now, an anxious attachment style, like the preoccupied or fearful styles, which are massively overrepresented in these situations, may explain why the divorce rates aren't as high as we would think they would be, right? Because the wife really wants the relationship to continue, even though there's a lot of suffering in the relationship. Another factor here could be the presence of avoidant personality disorder in the husband. I mentioned before that in these marriages, the prevalence of avoidant personality disorder for the husband is 11%, which is higher than what we'd expect in the population. And we know that avoidant personality disorder is special in a few different ways. One of the ways this personality disorder is special is that individuals with this disorder have a lower chance of becoming divorced. So all of the other personality disorders, all nine of them, are associated in general with an increased risk of divorce. Avoidant personality disorder is associated with a decreased risk of divorce. So we see kind of both sides being affected here from the wife's point of view, again, anxious attachment, and from the husband's point of view, the presence of avoidant personality traits or the actual personality disorder. So kind of an interesting mix of factors that could explain why this divorce rate isn't as high as we might think. Now, with all these signs, with all 10 signs, and of course there are other signs out there, individuals may get discouraged. They may think, well, a marriage where the wife has BPD is a marriage that's going to involve a lot of suffering and it's doomed and all this. But actually, treatment can help quite a bit. In my career, I've treated a number of people in this situation, and the results are usually somewhat positive. Now, certainly there are some instances where nothing good happens or what happens isn't as good as we would hope. But in many instances, treatment does have a positive impact on the marriage. So I understand when I mention recovery and personality disorders that there's another explanation, right? So someone could have a personality trait, perhaps something like high conscientiousness, and also happen to have BPD. And that conscientiousness could explain why they come to therapy in the first place and explain why they might recover, right? So really there could be an alternate explanation other than that counseling helps people in this situation. And I understand that's the case every time we look at a mental disorder, right? We could look at a disorder and say, well, somebody has this disorder, but they might have this other characteristic, and the other characteristic is explaining why they improve, right? This is what we deal with with all mental disorders, including all the personality disorders. Even with that in mind, I still believe counseling can be a very successful path for somebody with a personality disorder. Even taking all that into account with other traits perhaps explaining why people improve. I know when I talk about topics like borderline personality disorder, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of the wife with BPD to be interesting. Thanks for watching.